Today, we light the first and second candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is hope, the second candle is peace. Colossians 3.15, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. Let us pray. Almighty God, you offer rest for our hearts and peace for our souls. Give us grace to seek peace in our lives, peace in this community, and peace in the world. Through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, amen. Welcome to St. Mark's Church on this second Sunday of Advent. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Let us join together in the collect for St. Mark's Church. Gracious God, through your fatherly goodness, make St. Mark's a Christian community united to serve others. Enrich our life in Christ, that we might celebrate and share Christ's love. And send your Holy Spirit to give us strength and courage to proclaim the good news of your love through word and deed. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cry, says, Cry out, and I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second book of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, 
not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to thee, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, Lord Christ. <laughs>
May only your word be spoken, Lord, and only your word be heard. Amen. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. It's about time for some good news, isn't it? I won't begin to list the trials 2020 has brought. You know them well. This year seems to have dragged on in some respects as we wait for a vaccine, wait for a reprieve from days unmoored from routine. But time seems to have skipped ahead forward in other ways. My kitchen calendar shows September. This can't be December. Thanksgiving, 4th of July, Easter. Remember how we used to celebrate holidays? Still, there is good news to be heard in today's scripture, and it is very timely. As we open the gospel, Mark calls this the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, and then promptly jumps backwards several centuries to let the prophets Isaiah and Malachi introduce John the Baptizer, who is to pave the way for the good news to be received. This passage was well known and loved by people as it proclaimed hope even in the most desperate of days. John, in his appearance there in the wilderness, wearing camel hair and only eating whatever was to be found, was another throwback to an earlier time. Is it called to mind the prophet Elijah? Now, to a people besieged by turmoil, as the Roman occupiers took over their streets and their economy, challenged their way of life and their identity as a people, a nostalgic look back to the time of Elijah reminded them of when, even though facing challenges, God's people knew they were God's people, and God was God. Nostalgia was a powerful draw, a longing great enough to bring them out to John in droves, answering his call to make ready, turn back to God, confess your sins, and seek forgiveness. Nostalgia is a powerful force. Oh, for the good old days. In a review of Anthony Eslin's book, Nostalgia, Going Home in a Homeless World, Wilfred McClay describes the bad reputation nostalgia has in some circles as being an overly sentimental practice of wistfully wallowing in a past that never really was. Even at its best, nostalgia is thought to be neither living fully in the present nor wholly in the past. Esalen discredits that bad reputation and reminds us of the value of nostalgia. The word nostalgia comes from the Greek that means aching for home. Nostalgia is the pull toward our origins, our home, the place we belong, the place where we know who we are and whose we are. So give in to it. Nostalgia is a natural longing that is to be honored. The pull of nostalgia goes beyond the old homestead, the holiday table, or even beloved church services. Nostalgia encompasses more than the pull towards the places and practices we've loved. Nostalgia brings up the people we've loved and who shaped us into the people we are. Nostalgia is a longing to not be alone anymore. Christians acknowledge the need to be in community, to be among not just those here in, in our parish or those beyond our door, to, but to be with those who have gone before us, 
to be a part of the great cloud of witnesses, and eventually, as the prayer book says, to be gathered to our ancestors. Nostalgia is the pull toward God. God, who is in our origin and our true home. For it is in God that you and I will be fully who we are and who we are intended to be. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. That aching for home may be the reminder of how far we've strayed. Nostalgia is not a sentimental journey to yesteryear, but a reminder of who and whose we are. Those who flocked to John in the wilderness knew that pull toward God and knew the promise that we heard in Isaiah, comfort, oh comfort my people. They went to the des desert to prepare the way for the God of love by examining their lives, confessing their sins, and returning to God's ways. In this season of Advent, we are called to do the same, examining our life as individuals and in the society in which we live. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every hill and mountain be made low. We are called to make way for God in our lives, called to come up from the valleys of shame and despair, called to come down from the mountaintops of self-reliance and superiority, called to level out all the things we've used to keep God at a distance. We are called in Advent to make our rough places smooth. Make way. God's desire is to be present with us, to be our comfort, to be the home that we ache for, the home that we return to. And that is good news. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. In the hushed anticipation of your coming, O Lord, kindle in us the desire to remain awake, that we might be ready for your coming and eager to pray. O God, you are the potter and we are the clay, the work of your hand. We pray for the church, that you might form us and mold us into the church you would have us be. 
Come, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. In your time, O Lord, the valleys shall be lifted up, the mountains and hills shall be made low, and the rough places will become a plain. We pray for our nations and all the nations that your peace would be manifest in every corner of the earth. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. In your kingdom, O Lord, you bring unending comfort. You feed your flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs into your arms. We pray for the sick, the suffering, and all those in distress of any kind, especially the victims of COVID-19. That you would heal all injuries, comfort all grief, and settle all wrongs. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. Your great works of redemption, O God, span the ages. We pray for those who rejoice this week as they celebrate their birthday and anniversaries, that they might obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sign might flee away. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. In the fullness of time, O God, you sent your Son to be born of our sister Mary. And his name was Emmanuel. God be with us. We thank you for your presence with us, and we pray that you might always be present with those whom we, no, whom we love but no longer see. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear our prayer. Come among us, O God, and hear our prayers, so that when your Son Jesus comes among us with great might and in manger mild, we might recognize his face and his voice and come to adore him. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And the peace of the Lord be always with you.
things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, he, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. gifts of God for the people of God. pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you 
with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you all. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.